welcome to the Football Town Show, ladies and gentlemen, where we take a look at round nine. And the first game on the card, we see Tomo Grigic's Metropolitan go up against Brimbank and old teammate Ivan Zilic. Next, Carlson and Chaban Rajab will have to deal with life after Lucas Krul as he's flown to Brazil. They're going to be tested against Duke Duvet CF Brunswick. And then Ernie Simsek returns to B-League action for Pasco Vale. They'll be looking to get three points against Gustavo Candelo and FC Essendon, who have only managed one win and sit at the bottom of the table. And in the next game, Andreas Cardemas returns to V-League action also from Essendon. He transfers to Fitzroy. And Torhan Sumbul, the giant striker for Moreland, will look to capture all three points for his struggling side. And in the match of the round, Amin Kadad Hume will look to continue their rise up the ladder against Vlado Zoj's Mikulam FC. But before we move on, ladies and gents, let's take a look at last week's results. Rimbank were too good for Ashburton in a shock result. Hume lost to the Vipers in a narrow match of the round. There were also wins for Mikulam, Metropolitan and Carlton. Pascaval and Brunswick's game will be played on a later date. The first clash of the night saw Brimbanker FC, who was sitting in 6th position, go against ladder leaders Metropolitan. Brimbank, who have been on a string of good results, continued their good form. Adam Alasevich, their leading top goal scorer, with a free kick. Although Metropolitan went up the other end and equalised in a matter of minutes, Ali Redzepovic showing that today was going to be no easy ride for Brimbank. It really should have been a 2-1 lead to Metropolitan, but luckily Tommy Wang was on his guard and stuck a hand up. But there was no stopping Dana Redzevich from that close range in the D. He easily rounded the keeper and put Metro into a deserving lead. Brimbank seemed shell-shocked. Tomo Grigic running from the defence right into the D to make it 3-1. Metropolitan, as we know, love to get themselves into a shootout. One of the best attacking teams on their day. Adam Husseini also getting in on the action as they had four individual goal scorers for the half. But Brimbank also are capable of scoring multiple goals. Adam Alasevic is the main reason of that. Latching onto a deflected strike, or reducing the deficit to a further two goals. And to get a win over a big side, you do need your fair share of luck. And that's what Amir Amedi got in his side's third goal before the half. To open the second period, Brimbank counted their lucky stars as a ball fell vacantly to Eric Hamre in the D and he slotted into an open net. But their joy didn't last long. Tomo Grigic getting his second for the game, a long-range effort putting Metropolitan back in front. Metro, who held a three-goal lead earlier on in the game, were keen to get that margin back. Adam Husseini getting his second of the game, followed by his third, scoring two quick goals inside the D. And when a corner deflected off Amir Ameti, Metropolitan had almost buried Brimbank's chances. Alasevich did his best to try and get Brimbank back into the game, holding off two Metropolitan defenders and slotting under Greg Lascaris with ease. Although at 8-5, the three-goal margin was going to be hard to bring back late in the game. Tomo Grigic made sure of that, extending the lead further. And Ali Radzepovic let Ivan Zilic know on the bench that he left the wrong team. He should have stayed with the latter leaders. The little striker getting his third of the game. And the cherry on top of the cake was added by Yusuf Avdic from the penalty spot, capping off the 12-5 result. With Adam Hussaini, Adam, 11-5 victory, mate. You're still at the top of the table, must be pretty happy with the performance. Yeah, look, I mean, we're on top at the moment with the game in hand over Pasco. Brimbank brought a strong team. I mean, everyone underestimated them. They slapped Ashbird at 9 2. So they had a full strength team. Fantastic result. The next game on the card saw FC Carlton, who were without Lucas Krull, the MVP of the FAFL last season, go up against CF Brunswick, who were desperate for a win and find their winning ways. Cameron Holmes had the first strike of the game, but was denied by Carlton keeper Jose Garcia. Chaba Rajab, the creative player, now that Lucas Krul was gone, set up Musho Novak for a fine strike. But it was keeper Jose Garcia's long ball, which found Novak in the D for a cheeky back heel, and the Brazilian celebrated with someone from the heavens above. But Brunswick bounced back soon after through youngster Danny Slovacek, who had a scuffed shot roll into the bottom right-hand corner for the 1-1. Last play of the half came from Steven Gustus, but his strike was denied easily by Brendan Chen. The start of the second half, Saf Ben Him collected the ball from halfway and finished off with a fine strike to put Carlton back into the lead. There was a lot of Lucas Krull about this side with a lot of passing and setting up and unselfish play. Chaban Rajab with a beautiful through ball to Steven Gustus who had nothing but an empty net to tap into. Gustus was at it yet again, linking up with Rajab who got his second assist of the game. Nana Yao 
slotting the ball into his own net. The score was soon 4-1. And there was more counter-attacking, flea-flowing futsal to come from Carlton. Mauricio Novak scoring his second of the game. A long-range toe poker gave Brendan Chen no chance. Shanit Aiden, who'd played a real captain's game, defending hard, was rewarded with a goal. The captain neatly chipping over two Brunswick players sprawled on the ground. Brendan Chen was finally beat by Mauricio Novak. And the final goal of the game was a consolation scored by Cameron Holmes to cap off the 6-2 result. Yeah, I think um, a lot of teams would have underestimated us coming into the game um, without Lucas. Um, we were confident coming in. We, we knew if we stuck to our structures and worked hard that what Lucas has been teaching us, it, it'll pay off. And it did. Lucas has done well with the boys and it's, it just showed on the park. Through the middle and tease, saved by Blake. and you're watching The Football Town Show. Go Futsal! Welcome ladies and gentlemen to Round 9's Match of the Round between Mikulam FC and Hume FC. Both sides in very different predicaments with Mikulam needing the points to get into the top eight while Hume looked to push for a title challenge this season. Phil Robotis has his regular lineup out there as they'll be looking to get their third win of the season and a much needed one at that. While for Hume, Aminka Dad has a huge lineup, new inclusions Joe Baker and Jordan Michalis will look to get another win on the board for the Hume Army. Here we are, ladies and gentlemen, Mikulam taking on Hume as Robotis plays in Kosturic early and it's off the post. Baker starting in his first appearance in a Hume shirt. That was just wide. He's in form, Matty Rogowski, the youngster, piling on the goals so far as he goes for Lubovic and Baker came out quickly. And oh, Tanky kicking out there and Lubovic now coming across. Cut out by Kulkuligu. Mazuski turnover. Now Majburi and Robotis, it's off the crossbar. Oh, and Mikulam have started this game much better than Hume. Robotis unmarked, and that's unlike Hume, so close. Is tankier. Kukulugu. We'll have to put in a big shift today. Mazuski. And now Rogowski crossed the goal. Oh, Kukulugu. Scuffs one. And that should have been put away. It should be 1 0 to Hume. Both sides with early misses. Robotis hitting the crossbar. Kukulugu missing the back post ball. Completely missing it. Is Filipovic. Seasoned V League campaign of this man. Made his name at Essendon. And he's now crossed over to Mikulam. As uh, Filipovic gets it out of there, Zoric. Vlado Zoric, great ball, Robotis, and again unmarked. And it's, oh, it's squeezed through, Masinovic. Aaron Masinovic has opened the scoring. Who would have predicted that? Robotis unmarked yet again. Zoric picking him out. Save made by Baker initially, and then the deflection off Kulkulaglu taking it in. Mikulam with a shock 1 0 lead at this point. As they try the same corner from earlier in the game. Side ball, I should say. As Zoric testing him again. Huma under immense pressure. Mikulam playing very well, and Baker could be under even more. He does very well there. Joe Baker coming out like a steam train. But this, Kulkulaglu made a huge error. So too Baker, but he made up for it in fine fashion. Here's Baker. Tankier. Tankia bursting through, playing wide, Rashidi Tankia, great save by Karsvan. He's come into the Mikulam lineup in recent weeks and done very well. Point blank save here from Tankia. Fantastic. It's Karsvan again to Filipovic. Zoric. And the pressure from Kukulagu now. Zoric. So calm on the ball. Now flicks through to Filipovic, who made his way through. Tankia. Now Kukulugu, they got a counter-attack cue. Kukulugu will go straight on and Karsvan saves again. 
But Kulubulut, the runners take the defenders away and his toe poke is saved. Hume just starting to call their way back into the game. Kukulubu, a big part of them doing it. Late in the half now, Rashidi down the line. Tankia with a strike, and what a strike it is. The captain of Hume, Mo Tankia, driving that one. Top corner, Karsvan could do nothing. That's surely one of his better goals, Mo Tankia, and he draws Hume level. Late goal there from Tankia, three minutes left. He's leveled things up right before the break is Filipovic. Dribbling through, playing it wide for Mosbury, and now Filipovic! Hume ripped apart. You don't often see that, but Igna Filipovic linking up with Kazra Mosbury restores the lead almost instantly. 2 1 now, and Hume under a lot of pressure. As one last chance from Robotis went over, but that's it, ladies and gentlemen. That's half time. Mikulam with a shock 2 1 lead. Stay tuned. Can they pull off the major upset? As we now return to the second half, ladies and gentlemen, Mikulam leading 2 1. They dominated for the most part here as Mazuski opening up and driving through three of them, and Vagovsky. Missing a very easy chance, had to do better, had to at least put it on target. But he blazed wide. Betty Gorin has come on for Joe Baker. They need goals now though, Hume. Kukulu. Rogowski. And driving through Rogowski. Now Mazurski. Top scorer last season. It was a revelation for Hume. In his second season with the club is now Masinovic. And oh! Aaron Masinovic, no one came to him as he gets his second goal and makes it 3-1 to Mikulam. And Hume are in real danger now. No one within 10 metres of him at least. Poor from Hume. Hume will look very worried. They look like they're rushing. Perhaps have to slow down a little as much. Rory cuts this out and they could be in more trouble as it's 3-1. on one. And now Masinovic can make it a hat trick. He just puts it wide. And you'd have to say, if that went in, it could have been curtains for Hume. Here's Goran. He'll bring it back in now for Kukulaglu. Now he plays it through Mazurski. Great turn, leaves Robotis for dead. And now Vragovsky hits the target. Missed an earlier chance, not quite as easy as that. But Mazurski did really well, created that goal. Played Vragovsky and he makes it 3-2. Still plenty of time left for Hume. A big goal though from Brogovsky, much needed. Mazuski now will play it wide and here's George Harrison across and Kulkulaglu finishes it. It's three all and George Harrison linking with his fellow defender Reza Kulkulaglu. And it's three all now. Typical Hume fighting spirit, they've clawed their way back. They've been much better at the start of the second half. Can only imagine what Amin Kadad said to them at half time. Here's Zoric, thinking it through. Kasturic beats Harrison and now he'll play it across and Rajburi! 4 3 and Mikulam lead again. More sloppy defending from Hume. Harrison trying to cut out that pass. He lost out here to Kasturic. And well, Mazuski should have done better to get in front of Majburi, but he makes a 4 3 with a classy finish. Here's Filipovic. Right over the top, Majburi getting up. Goran, he's not happy with the call here for Majburi. Kukulugu driving through Mikeles, he's been quiet. And oh, that could have been the spark they needed and he needed. Driving back post Mazuski, not getting there. Mikulam still with the lead. Filipovic laying it off and now Masinovic, good save by Goran. One he had to make. As here's Harrison, down the line. And Jordan Mikeles, foul. Here's the earlier uh, save from Goran. Now Harrison, wide, Mazuski. No one thought he'd keep that in now, but did Mazuski lost out. Majburi doing really well to track back. And now going through, blocked by Harrison. Majburi walked through too easily there. Mazuski across and he finishes it. Everyone from Mikulam looking to the back post, but Mazuski beat him on the near post. Mikeles 
playing in Mazuski there, and they all thought it's going to Kukulagu again. But he squeezed it in. For all now. Six minutes. Who will be our hero? Michaelis has been quiet. Harrison. Mazurski. Oh, and it fell for Karsvan now, and away he goes. He's come a long way out. Karsvan playing it wide for Filipovic, and oh, Karsvan! He should have put that away after all the work he did. Now Mazurski. Harrison goes back post again, but he really should have taken the shot. Comedy of errors at both ends. Karsvan should finish this. Would have put them in front, and then Harrison fails to fire a goal. Went back post. Well, here's Harrison again. Michaelis, someone needing to step up. But we're letting in a draw now. Harrison driving through Mazurski, and Michaelis finishes it. His first V League game, his first V League goal. And looks like, well, he's put them in front with a good finish laid off by Mazurski. 5 4 now the score. Here's Harrison now bursting away. George Harrison, Rashidi. Saved by Karsvan and he'll take it away now. And oh, Zorich so close. Took it first time. And well, Goran denying him. Now, it's Harrison turning away. Rogovsky, surely he's finished it. Matty Rogovsky makes it 6 4 to Hume. And that should be Curtains. There's Tankier's ball across, and Rogovsky this time makes no mistake. Bosdegan comes on for a minute. And, well, that's his minute off. Didn't get much time, but Hume come away with a point. 6-4. And, well, lucky you could say in the end. <laughs> With Jordan from Hume, Jordan, first game, 6-4 win. What did you think of the f your first impressions of the V-League? Um, yeah, it's a lot tighter than I thought it was. Like it, it looks more like when you get here, but it's much tighter when you get in there. But it was good intensity, like a lot of shots, a lot of counter-attacks sort of thing. I really enjoyed it, so it was good. Um, yeah, Min just, uh, he's a really aggressive coach. He likes to score a lot of goals, and I guess if we're not scoring, he's not very happy. But um, uh, he just wanted to implement a high press sort of thing and win the ball in our front third sort of thing, so then when we win it, we can take a shot rather than winning it near our keeper and having to start again, so yeah. Just aggressive press, I guess. Majowski! Matthew Majowski! What a cracker of a goal. Reads the play, keeps the ball in down the line, cuts inside, beats the player. Simsek, oh, Carl, with a big save. Player Sunny Malone completes his hat trick. What a debut it's been. That's Game over. Dahani, lovely finish. Sam Dahani cracks one back for more. Great save by Lorenzo de Paris again. That's a fine bit of play. Hi, I'm Alicia. You're watching the Football Town Show. Go Futsal! Welcome back to the Round 9 Football Town Show, ladies and gentlemen, where we wrap up the final clashes of the night. And the next game on the card saw Pasco Vale FC go up against last place FC Essendon. Many would have thought there was going to be cricket scores by the end of this game. Last time these two teams took to the pitch against each other, Essendon held Pasco Vale to a thrilling five-ball draw. When a loose ball fell to Alex Kobo, his toe poker was denied by the left post. And in a cruel twist of fate, when the ball deflected to Sofian Sufi, he teed up Bruno Pilati for Pasco Valls first. Essendon hearts were shattered, being so close yet so far. Gustavo Candelo, who usually likes to toe poke at every opportunity, was denied by Bysa, who was untroubled. And Andre Caro, when the ball looked to be rolling out of the sideline, he quickly got a shot away to make it 2-0 just before half-time. It was a good position for Essendon to be in as they were within striking distance. That wasn't to last long though. Youngster Scott Rogan coming off the bench in his first game to score his first V-League goal. And then he soon had a second as Essendon failed to pick up the youngster, making a delightful run through the D from a corner. And it was soon 5-0 as Rodrigo Evangelisti came from defence. He doesn't get forward much, but with the scoreline at 4-0, why wouldn't you go up and take your chances? Ryan Timmons, in only his second game for Pasco Val, was throwing his body around like a seasoned keeper as he desperately wanted to keep this clean sheet. 
Alejandro Osorio went close. Timmons standing tall and tipping over the bar. Evangelisti was enjoying his time up forward so much so that he was able to bag his second goal and he celebrated in traditional Evangelisti style. Sofian Sufi, who didn't have a goal to his name, went quite close, beating the keeper with ease but hitting the outside of the post. Sufi was at it moments later, this time turning provider for Bruno Pilati, who just had to walk the ball into the back of the net. The Brazilian defender soon had his second. With the three points all wrapped up, it certainly was party time, and it, there was enough time for Scott Rogan to get his third of the game and collect man of the match honours. Well done to the 16-year-old. It's pretty exciting, um, the constant movement, constant play. I was always moving, always in getting right position, and yeah, got a few goals from that. It's a big thing, you know, like, just coming down here, playing a couple of games, get noticed, now I'm in the big leagues, playing a lot of fun, yeah. And in the last clash of the night, we saw the Moreland Blues go up against Fitzroy FC, who were without Fernando de Moraes for this clash, but in his place came former FC Essendon star Andres Cardemus, and Fitzroy got off to a flying start, Ilhan Altuntas with a thunderbolt from the right sideline, and it didn't take long for Cardemus to find his feet, providing a, a good one-two with Altuntas for one of the goals of the week, and Fitzroy was soon comfortably 2-0. Cardemus and Altuntas were at it yet again, this time, it was Altuntas who set up Ben Montioni for a delightful chip over the keeper. She has done multiple times this season. Tuhan Sumbul's strike was going off target, but luckily Osman Coase was in the D to deflect it in for Morelands first. But in a cruel twist of fate, it's exactly what happened right down the other end. Osman Coase deflecting in for an own goal. Fitzroy restoring their two-goal margin. It didn't last long. Ivan Franjic, the key defender for Moreland with a beautiful strike from a corner. Then the deficit was reduced to one. The score was soon 4-3, Osman Coaster's header making up for his earlier blunder. It was a welcome back to V-League action for Turhan Sumbul, who scored an important goal for Moreland as they continued their momentum from the second half and the score was soon at 4-4. But the youngsters had a lot to prove. Ilhan Altuntas wanting to show that without Fernando, they were still a threat and Andres Cardemas helped that threat also with a deceiving free kick to set up Montioni for his second. Fitzroy now had restored their two goal buffer and they wanted to make it a third and really kill off Moreland. Montioni was providing a little superstar in the making as he scored his hat-trick, his first hat-trick for the season. But with their season on the line, Moreland were not done yet. Set out Akiol having to score an absolute blinder, get them back into the game. And in the next run of play, it was Akiol yet again, who could have had a second, but he was denied by the crossbar. Sonakul, who had a great run from defense, was stopped by Cardemas, who was having a fantastic debut for Fitzroy, and he capped it off with a goal. Unluckily for the keeper, the ball deflected straight to the Colombian, who had no option but to finish high. With only minutes remaining and the score at 8-6, you would have thought Fitzroy had done enough to win the game, but Moreland weren't going to die wondering. Osman Coast with the long-range strike only made it two goals in it, and when Tuhan Sumbul scored with seconds remaining, Fitzroy had got the three points. Yeah, um, unfortunately, two months ago I was playing the FAFL Cup and I got injured, but I'm, I'm happy, I'm glad to come back and play with this, with this team. Unfortunately, in the end, we didn't play good, but yeah. We won, and this is the important thing. Well, there it is, ladies and gentlemen. Round nine, done and dusted. As we always do, let's start by taking a look at all the round nine results. Metropolitan, too good for Brimbank, as were Carlton and Pasco Vale over Essendon. Fitzroy narrowly overcame Moreland, while Hume defeated Mickleham. The blockbuster between the Vic Vipers and Ash Burden will have to wait till a later date. Taking a look at the round nine ladder, Metropolitan are outright leaders on top on 24 points. And in a restructure of the league, the bottom four teams now will be directly relegated to the state league, while the eighth place team will play off against the first place in the state league. That means it's not good news for Essendon, Moreland, Micklem or Fitzroy, who are all in that dreaded drop zone. Taking a look at the top goal scorers, Tomo Grigic for Metropolitan leads the way on 19, followed by Matty Bedrovsky on 16, Ali Redzepovic and Adam Alasevich both on 15, and Sofian Sufi for Pascal is on 12. And taking a look at next week's clashes, the top three clashes not to miss are Human Pascal Vale, the Vic Vipers and Metropolitan, and the relegation clash between FC Essendon and FC Carlton is sure to be a belter. Thanks for joining us, ladies and gents. Let's go to Goal of the Week.